Let's now go to Trey Yinks. He's live on the ground in southern Israel. Trey, you've been doing incredible work nonstop for all of us. Please let us know what is new this morning. Dana, good morning. Just about an hour ago, there were sirens sounding along the Israel-Gaza border in the town of Niroz. that sits just next to Gaza, less than a mile away. The IDF says two drones from inside Gaza were intercepted. They ultimately did not hurt or kill anyone, but it gives you a sense of the types of weapons that are being used against southern Israel still 17 days into this war. We were in Niroz a few days ago bringing you live images in the aftermath of that massacre on October 7th. I do want to show you our latest reporting from that area. Blood-stained floors lead to bullet holes in a shelter door. If the walls of this house could speak, they would weep. Residents here in Niroz were executed at point-blank range. In some homes, frozen in time, small pieces of life are scattered amid the remains of death. In others, recovery teams are still finding burned bodies. 25% of Niroz's population is missing or dead. The other 75% is left to make sense of the senseless, to be a voice for the voiceless. If you could just speak to him, what would you say? Hold on. We're coming. We're doing our best. Lior Perry grew up in Niroz. His brother was killed in the October 7th massacre, his father taken hostage. We didn't take the time to be sad yet. And we didn't take the time to mourn yet. We, we feel, I feel, and, and our small family feel that we, we have a mission. That mission is to bring 79-year-old Chaim Perry home, a man who spent his life helping Palestinian children in Gaza and making art to protest violence against Palestinians. The Israeli army now controls what's left of Niroz. Amid the trees and houses, soldiers wait for their next mission. On the other side of a fence topped with barbed wire, black smoke is seen in the distant horizon. The Israeli Air Force is striking Gaza. You can hear those Israeli airstrikes along the Gaza Strip. What you're looking at there is Gaza. Near Oz sits less than a mile from the border. Militants were able to simply walk into this quiet community last Saturday, slaughtering so many innocent people in their homes. Another story we are following out of Niroz is nine-year-old Ohad, whose birthday is today. He's currently being held captive inside Gaza. Dana. Trey, I was wondering one thing. This is uh, my own th question. For people who are still there on the ground or people who are in Gaza, are, are, is the Internet up and working? Are people able to get messages, especially for those trying to explain to people how best they can get out? So there are some areas along the Gaza border that are being jammed for cellular activity. The military doesn't want militants along the border to have any ability to communicate. And as we've seen over the past 24 hours, it's an incredibly active front. The Israelis are doing daily incursions into Gazan territory to retrieve bodies, gather intelligence on the hostages, and also kill any of the militant cells from Hamas or Islamic Jihad along the border. So there is some connectivity in this area. Inside Gaza, we've been talking with civilians who are still in the northern part of Gaza, despite the calls to leave ahead of a looming ground offensive. But the connectivity is very difficult, and the electricity is limited inside the Strip. Dana? Right. Trey Yanks, continue to stay safe. Thank you.